heading down to Forest Road 550 or FR 550 if you're looking on the map. I'm going to do a little dispersed camping, which is uh, free camping if you're not familiar with that term. There's some dark clouds ahead. Looks like rain. All right, getting pretty close. Just to give you an idea of what the road condition looks like, it's not uh, it's not a road you would need a high clearance vehicle for, but it is kind of rough if you can see the the washboard uh, ruts there in the road. We'll see how it goes on the the rest of it. All right, coming from this end, which seems to be the higher numbered ends, it's just under 40, so it's either 36 or 37 spots. This is a uh, site 33, and didn't have any trouble getting up here. Roads uh, fairly uh, in good shape. Fire ring there, and on top uh, this is a spot for our tent. If you're tent camping, of course we're uh, we're not tent camping. We're going to be vehicle camping today. Just up here to see a few things. Thought this would be a great way to see it in a in a vehicle. Get up here in the mountains. Oh, that's very nice. Another spot down there, a little further in. get set up a little bit better before it starts raining on us again. Forgot to get my garbage bag out. You can see it, but it is burning. I'm trying to beat the rain, so I'm kind of rushed. Otherwise, I'd have got this table a little bit more level than it is. I think I'm just gonna do three pieces for now just to hurry up and get something done before it starts to rain really hard. It's about done. makes it even better.
this ended up being a better way to cook if you don't have your on and out. Well, this is a great campsite, but I'll have to say it gets pretty crowded. With its close proximity to Denver, it's easy to get to location. I'm here with a two-wheel drive van, as you can see. Um, and it's free. You can't be free. This place in the summertime is packed, especially if you try to come here on a Friday night uh, through Sunday. You're not going to be able to find a spot easily, and you're likely to encounter a lot of rowdy folks, too, from what I understand. Uh, so the best time to come is in the off-season. That's what we're doing here today. Just down this road is uh, another campground called Buffalo Creek Campground. Now that one's a paid campground, not to be confused with this one. No, it doesn't look it on this camera, <clears throat> but it is starting to get dark. I just want to show you what the uh, road conditions look like while I can. It is pretty much like this the entire way. It's not uh, something a car couldn't handle, but it is rough. There's some rough spots. I'll show you here. You can kind of see where it has a little bit of a washboard effect. So it is kind of jarring. As you're coming up, but as you can see, this two-wheel drive minivan made it okay. These are great sites. These are totally free. They're called dispersed camping, if you're not familiar with that term. And you can stay here up to 14 days. Just find an empty spot, pull in, and it's yours as long as you want it up to the 14 days. There's no facilities or electricity or anything. What you're seeing there is uh, that light is actually going to a battery pack in my car. And yeah, it's pretty good through here. Light traffic, not nothing too bad. Yeah, the cardboard does pretty good for blocking out a light. There is a really bright light bulb going on inside the van. You can barely tell it from here. Of course, I got one going on the outside of the van here, too. But yeah, it does really good. So inside the van now. And, uh... Let me tell you about this tablet I got. This is a uh, an Amazon Fire tablet, kind of a, a real cheap one. In fact, it's not even the current model. It's the 10 inch from uh, the past model. But they had them on sale for $34. I thought for $34, you can't go wrong there. Well, I got the thing and it, it is very underpowered for just about everything, but I was able to repurpose it and it does great on old uh, video games like uh, arcade games. So let me show you one. Here is what you would see if you plugged in an arcade cabinet. Now, this is a program called MAME, Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. So it, it takes the ROMs from an arcade cabinet and you could run them on a, a computer or a tablet or whatever you got. And if you'll notice it even down here, it, uh, it's wanting you to put a coin in. So you have to map a key out on your uh, controller to simulate the coin drop. So what I've got is, uh, I just took an old, I don't know if you can see it in the dark. Let me see if I can put some light on that. It's an old PlayStation controller, and it's Bluetooth capable. So I'll go ahead and uh, let me start the game here. And you'll see the coin credit there. And we'll just get this going here. Yeah, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Boy, this guy goes camping with arcade games. But you know, I'm actually just out here just to see stuff more than I am the camping bit. While I enjoy that as well. This gives me something to do. So 
So yeah, if you're looking uh, for just a cheapy tablet, Amazon's got these 10.1 inch uh, fire tablets for $34, or at least they did. I think it only lasted a week, that sale, but they, they will probably do that uh, more than once throughout the year if you're looking to get one. Just kind of hang tight. Oh, got me. Here's another classic. I think you would have to be of a certain age to remember these. I do. <laughs> they had this very game in a little arcade cabinet that you sit down in front of called a cocktail cabinet in a pizza hut where I grew up. So it's kind of funny. I see these old games and I associate where I saw the game at. So every time I see this one, I think Pizza Hut. Ooh, got me. I'm not very good at this game. Glad I brought him along to rush up on my uh, arcade skills. It is cool this morning. Overall, it was pretty quiet last night. Just a few cars passed by, and that was about it. Really secluded. Very quiet. Love it. Well, as far as setup goes, it's got a unmodified van. This is a 2007 Toyota Sienna. It's been a good one. I bought it new and uh, it is old, old now, but it is still going. It has uh, over 200,000 miles. Inflatable bed. And for lighting, I have a, uh, a power box that I made and I use regular household lights uh, with these little adapters. So I could just plug them right into an extension cord. So they're great for hanging uh, off of a tree limb or something to light up your camp. And I've got several of them so I can put some on the inside and the outside. Cooler. I'm going to get an electric refrigerator at some point. I just haven't done that yet. And uh, I'll bring the box out in a moment and I'll show you that. I charge it with a solar panel that I can clip onto the top or lay it on the ground and Catch a sunny spot. All right, quick look at the battery box. I've got a lithium iron phosphate battery. 
Uh, right now, it's got a 100 amp hour in there. It, could, it can accommodate three of those or for 300 amp hours at 12 volts. And it's got a little inverter. Converts uh, DC power over to AC, USB, uh, external input and output to the battery. If you need to jump start the car, you can unscrew these terminals. There's uh, copper terminals on the inside. And that's real handy. Uh, let's see. Yep, you can power any household appliances within the wattage limit of the inverter. Of course, this is better on the end of an extension cord, so it turns into a drop light or personal lamp. And uh, that's where the quick disconnect is for the one of the solar inputs. I've got two. Inside's got a Victron controller, so I can use multiple import import input sources. So, yep, yeah, that's the battery box. The box is great for deflating and inflating the bed. Great things about these minivans is uh, the ability to sink the seat down into the floor. They still have it available if you want to use it. They just fold straight out. And when you've got it sitting upright, you can use the area that it came out of to store your bins and other things. So everything fits in a place. It's pretty good. Breakfast time. going extra cheese today. Hmm. You know what goes good with bacon? A Mountain Dew. After a good two days of camping here, it's about time to head down the road. One quick trip around the campsite, just make sure I got everything picked up, and we'll head out. Closer to the road, it's got a fire ring, but there's also a uh, fire pit up here. Made out of rocks. Guess you'd have one up there. Oh man, people just dumping their trash everywhere. That's definitely not mine. I only drink the green ones. I'm going to pick it up anyway because that's the thing about these free places. They won't stay free if people don't take care of them. Example being uh, Rampart Range Road down, down the road here a little bit. Used to have a bunch of dispersed camping sites that were free. They're still there now, but you got to pay for them. It's because they had so many people just trashing the place. They had to Hire somebody to maintain it. So we don't want that to happen to these other spots. So pick up your garbage. Looks like somebody had their dog out here and lost his ball. That's unfortunate.
And just to give another example, this is site number nine. It's got a neat rock formation over here. There's quite a few of these uh, in this area, I noticed. this video up here this has been a quick look at forest road 550 and the free campsites within oh if i didn't mention it this is in the state of colorado southwest of denver